Is it recording? Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Easter. Today's Easter Sunday. I haven't posted a video since 2023. So Happy New Year, I guess. Um, I'm so sorry. To be completely honest with you, um, I set this up this morning, just a few minutes ago. And I thought, oh my god, this is such work. And what I've been reading, and this has pretty much been my train of thought since last year. So I'm hoping to post more regularly, but reading takes priority, and my free time is a jewel and a treasure. And I hope um, that I can just find a balance here between filming and editing, which does take um, a lot of time, and um, reading and enjoying myself. So I've got loads to tell you. <laughs> um, and hopefully that's going to be kind of a range really um, between categories, different categories. I've got books here, shows, um, do I have films? Yes, I do. yeah, okay, so I've got books, shows, um, video games, films and um, YouTube videos as well. So let's go. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to talk about a Fantasy of Manners series which I have been um, reading and which I found out about last year, I think. I came across this last year and it's the Ladies Occult Society by Chris T. Ball. I have talked about it a little bit on the channel before but um, I did want to talk about it properly here, um, especially since the newest one actually was released I think sometime in March. So the first one is called A Magical Inheritance. I do love a picnic. The second one is A Ghostly Request. And the third is In the Society of Women. Oh, I'm so excited about this. So these books are, mm, this is really good. This is my favourite regular tea actually, I don't buy anything else as far as regular tea goes. I think it's a, more, it's a fabulous blend. It's so Moorish and generous and does have a biscuit flavour. It's the Yorkshire, I think it's the Yorkshire biscuit tea. Um, it's amazing. Uh, I live by it so <laughs> this has kept me alive for however many years actually since, since it was released I think. Um, okay so these books are fantasy manners meaning fantasy set in the Regency era. Um, which is kind of my niche pet genre. So, um, and these are about Elizabeth, who is a spinster. She's six and twenty, and um, she has a whole family to support, um, a whole family of women actually. And her father is really overbearing, and he doesn't appreciate her at all. She runs the household. There are lots of um, minute details about running a household in the Regency, uh, household accounts, how to mend clothing, how to. Uh, take care of servants, how to take care of a house really. It's amazing. I love this amount of details. Um, I have never seen that elsewhere um, really across you know, across genres. I have never seen that elsewhere, this kind of amount of details about running the everyday of running a household, which I love. Um, lots of food, um, that sort of thing. So I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, so her family doesn't appreciate her. Her father has recently remarried to um, a woman who's actually younger than Elizabeth called Isabella. And um, she's trying to navigate her sister's, you know, wants and needs, they're teenagers. Um, her step, her, so her stepmother is actually pregnant and it's a risky pregnancy so she's trying to navigate that as well and unexpectedly an uncle leaves her an inheritance when he dies and she inherits um, occult books, so books about magic. She's able to summon a ghost and she creates a society of women who can do small magic. Um, so far it's been quite small and, and yeah but very interesting. Her sister Mariah married a man called Henry. Their couple is couple goals um, and you do see quite a lot of them and it's just marvellous honestly. It's very small scale, it's very cosy and it's really all about um, female friendship. There's a lot of that female friendship, um, looking out for other women and yeah the minutiae of running everything in the Regency era uh, where you don't really have much money. So yeah, and um, it's also about Elizabeth's journey to her independence, even though she is um, a bookish introvert, she um, gains independence through novels, but she, she's still the same, um, you know, 
bookworm uh, and introvert uh, as she was at the beginning of the of the series. But she gains independence and she gains a little bit of financial independence as well as she um, literally little sells um, the books that she inherited and that she finds a way to make money. Um, much to the dismay of her father. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. The latest one in the Society of Women was released earlier this um, this month and, oh my god, well I should say it's more actually, it's the 1st of April, um, last month <laughs> in March, in the Society of Women and it was so, so good. There's one more coming at least, um, I think next year and I just, I cannot recommend this enough. I um, I've, I've talked about this before actually, but I only buy physical copies of books which I absolutely adore and which are favourites of mine and I've already bought all three because I know that I'm going to be rereading them forever. Highly, highly recommend this Head and Joe. If you like a fantasy of manners, rich and see fantasy. This has very little fantasy by the way, um, don't expect anything much, um, it's, it's just one or two touches per book. But um, what little we get is interesting and it's very much, as I said, about female friendship, running a household, um, mending dresses, ordering food, preparing food and all of the day to day of um, running a household full of women of different ages and wants and needs and yeah, trying to um, slowly gain dependence from your, from your overbearing father as well. It's amazing. I love these books so, so much. Sip of tea. Hmm. I haven't had breakfast yet, so if I sound a little unhinged, <laughs> that's why. Um, I am a little bit restless actually, but I don't know, I just wanted to film this video real quick, to be quite, quite good honest with you. I filmed it yesterday, I thought, oh my god, I can't look at myself, I need to delete this. I deleted it, and I'm refilming this right now, so uh, this has been a labour of love, um, quite frankly. Okay, so number two, I'm going to edit the covers. Um, starting now actually because the rest of it I don't have in physical form. Number two is the Lady Sherlock mystery series. Um, I came across this years and years ago, I think I mean, it would have released actually, but I read the first one called um, A Study in Scarlet Women. This is by Sherry Thomas who is actually um, also a, a marvellous uh, romance author. She writes fantasy, she writes historical romance, she writes um, historical mystery, she's amazing. Anyway, um, Sherry Thomas um, published in the society, uh, well, actually, in, in a study in Scarlet Women years and years ago, came across it, tried to read, tried to read it, and the plot, the, the mystery actually, the puzzle, was so intricate and so difficult to follow that I just gave up and I never picked it up again until um, late last year. And I am current now with the series, that a bunch of them, I think seven or eight or so. Um, the next one is coming out in June, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's A Ruse of Shadows. This is an amazing series, so, so good. Um, one of my absolute favourite things in the world is Lady Detectives and the Victorian era. Um, I love Victorian, Edwardian, Gilded Age and Regency. And I would read anything with women in those eras. So this is a special trait, honestly. I just couldn't get into the puzzle at the time, but I pushed through this time around. And what, what a delight it was and what a reward as well. Um, the Lady Sherlock mystery series is all about Charlotte Holmes, who actually is posing as her um, brother, who doesn't exist, um, Sherlock Holmes. And so she acts as an intermediary between, um, so she, she sets up shop at the beginning of the first book. She flees her family actually after a scandal. She's on her own and she sets up shop um, as in, in, you know, she sets up a detective agency as Sherlock Holmes, as saying, saying that um, her brother Sherlock is sick and that he's bedridden and she acts as an intermediary between the clients and him. And um, it's, it, it's quite clever, although, I think, I, I don't know if people would really not see through the charade, but, um, but okay, it works in the books anyway, um, nobody, you know, is none the wiser, so that's great. And she acts as an intermediary between the clients and him, but in fact she's the one solving the cases. The cases are wide ranging, they are um, really all sorts of cases, all sorts of puzzles, um, it's numerous per books actually, there are numerous cases per book sometimes. She is amazing, I love her, she's very methodical, very logical. Um, somewhat detached, aloof, somewhat cold, um, but you do get into her mind and it's fascinating. And there are ciphers and um, intricate puzzles and crosswords and 
oh my god, and messages in the newspaper and things to decipher and I, I absolutely love those books. What I also love about those books is that um, you do get to know very well the cast of characters, the entire cast of characters, not just Charlotte but her family, um, her siblings, she's got a sister called Livia who is wonderful, she's got um, another sister called Henrietta who is, um, who has mental problems actually. She's mentally ill and um, they are, they're trying to take care of her as best as they can, um, which is a fascinating um, foray into, um, into Victorian care at the time for the, for the mentally sick. Um, it's, it's fascinating, honestly. The secondary characters, again, um, you, do get a lot of, you do get to see quite a lot of, talk quite a lot of. They assist her um, in solving the crimes and you get a lot of subplots actually from them. Mrs. Watson, who is her, um, she, she, well, she, you'll see, but um, there is a Mrs. Watson. She is my favorite character of them all. Um, and Charlotte also has a very slow burn, kind of forbidden at first romance um, with a man, I'm not going to say who. Um, and it just, it's a slow burn, but you do get gratification at some point. You do get loyalty points <laughs> for sticking around for them at some point. And it's very interesting, very sexy as well. Sherry Thomas writes um, sexy romances um, as well. So that's, we, we do get a really good romance actually in this book, in this series, I should say. And uh, yeah, what I would say though, is that the, when my one caveat, I suppose, I, I don't know if it's a caveat or not, but you do need to be aware of it perhaps, is that I never expect them to be, I never expect the series to have books which are so, so connected to each other. Meaning, you can't really read them out of order. Um, the, the plots, they will spoil the rest of the books for you, first of all. And most of the time, actually, the, the next book um, picks up in the same scene as the last book, or just a few minutes afterwards. You don't get a lot of gaps between books in terms of timeline, and um, you do need to be completely 100% um, up to date with the series before moving on to the next book. And sometimes, as a result, I think they are a bit redundant um, in terms of plot. Moriarty takes up a lot of space. Um, it was filled first. I think it just, I'm a bit worn out now, a little bit. I'm Moriarty. I'm just a bit Moriarty'd out. <laughs> but um, but it, it's it's good. It's just that it's, it's a little bit redundant, um, if you know what I mean. In that there is a lot of repetition, not in terms of puzzles, um, but in terms of the general overall, you know, overarching um, story, I suppose. Um, yeah, so that, there is that. Um, but I, I love them so, so much and I highly recommend them, really. But you do need to, to be up to date with the series to, um, to move on to the next book. So don't wait them out of order, please. Um, start with A Study in Scarlet Women, the cover of which is here by Magic. It's like bewitched. <laughs> okay. Um, next up is Eva Ebertson. Oh my God. Um, absolutely adore her. She is um, an author who, um, she was born in Austria and she had to flee Nazi Germany and she lived in England for the rest of her years and for the rest of her life and she wrote a number of books, five of which I would classify as um, adult romances, YA romances, perhaps the heroines are all in their early 20s, so adult romances, let's just say that. Very sweet. There's nothing that happens besides kisses. Um, but oh my god, um, absolutely wonderful. What a gem. What a gem. I read all five of them um, this year. So between January and March, just couldn't stop. Honestly, couldn't help myself. Absolutely gorgeous. The titles um, are, let's see if I can remember that. Um, okay. Okay. Um, the Sequent Countess, also called, this is not going to work, okay, so first, okay, 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 um, The Secret Countess, um, no, 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 The Reluctant Countess, no, what? There are two of them actually with countesses, no, this is, this is starting off well, let me just, okay, A Company of Swans, um, A Company of Swans, The Countess Below Stairs, also called the Secret Countess, The Morning Gift, A Song for Summer, and Magic Flutes, also called The Reluctant Harris. Did I get them right? I think so. Let's check. I don't know. I think 
yes I, yes. Okay, so five of them, all of them, I would say, um, are Anastasia types of books. So they're all about, as you can probably tell from the titles and the alternative titles, they are all about secret heiresses, secret countesses, secret princesses, um, just having to flee a situation, mostly because of Nazi Germany. She writes a lot about the, uh, that backdrop. Um, and um, passing really as a common as commoners and they are beloved by everybody and they also find love gorgeous romances her style of writing is absolutely gorgeous there are whole passages which i wanted to to quote actually to rewrite um in my quotation book in my commonplace book um that i keep my notebook um, there are whole passages like that which are so lyrical and so practical and so wonderful, so gorgeous. She, she's very evocative. Um, she has a, an incredible sense of place. She, I mean, I still like talking about her now. I still can see in my in my mind's eye um, whole scenes of her books which take place at the beach, which are so evocative. In Vienna, which are so evocative. In England, um, which are so evocative. She writes about academics and um for example harriet actually in the company of swans is um a, a girl who was born in a loveless really house because her father is a very aloof academic and she flees to the amazon to um join a ballet uh, troupe and she finds love there as well it's gorgeous um Another book is about um, this woman who was separated. She, she has to flee Russia, and so she passes as um, a servant, house servant, actually. But really, she's countess, and she befriends everybody in the house. And marvelous things happen. She has a wonderful romance um, in a mo the, the Morning Gift. Um, it's an arranged marriage, actually. It's a marriage of convenience, and the heroine. Um, is rescued really by this man who um, marries her just to get her out of the country, um, get her out of Austria, um, to go to England. And so they have a marriage of convenience. They are married, but just in, in name and in name only. And when they try to get a divorce, I realise that actually they're probably in love. And this has also a lovely backdrop of passionate um, people just studying what they love most in the world. And this one is paleontology. And yeah, it's about dancing, it's about music, it's about um, domestic activities, it's about romance. And um, I, I, I really love her, she's wonderful. She's fairy tales for adults, really. Well, fairy tales are for adults, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, really Anastasia types of things. And I, I had no idea that she was this good. Otherwise I would have read her years ago um i i really adore her i highly recommend her i'm going to um perhaps do a whole video about her um i do want to read because she wrote um adult romances but she also wrote a lot of children's books and she also has a collection of short stories so i do want to read a bit more um first by her so in order to to make a proper video about all of my recommendations and where to start and why you should read her and just have that on the internet for everybody to um to, to see really and everybody who is interested in reading her doesn't know where to start necessarily uh, or doesn't know if it's if she's for them can uh, see the video can watch the video and uh, make a decision so Wow, I haven't bought all of her books yet because I want specific covers, i.e. those covers. Um, but yeah, I do want all of her books and she's the kind of author, I'm, I'm, I'm really a bit fanatical about her. She's the kind of author, I'm, I think I'm going to track down like sound editions or something. She, she's this kind of, she's this, this level of adoration right now for me. So I highly recommend her. If you haven't, um, if you haven't read her, you are missing out. Um, Next up, okay, is a bunch of uh, TV shows actually, which I rewatched or watched for the first time. So rewatched, I rewatched all of the Miss Marple episodes. Um, I like the recent ones best. I like Joe and X or Joanna Hickson, but I am obsessed with Julie McKenzie and um, the other actress as well. I can't remember her name, but Geraldine McKellen, I think. Um, but yeah, absolutely adore them. Adore this series. It's the most recent one. And I just completely love the episodes. They are so much fun and so crazy. Um, absolutely adore them. So I rewatched all of the Miss Marple, Miss Marple episodes, the recent series. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three with Geraldine McKellen and four, five, six with Julie McKenzie. Um, 
I really like Julie McKenzie the best. I think she's just the most, I don't know, um, she's the kindest, um, but also the most, the smartest and most insightful Miss Marple. This she's is the closest to Miss Marple, um, of, you know, um, of the books for me, um, and to my, my Miss Marple, I suppose. And it did make me want to reread the books, I have to say. Um, I've also been re-watching constantly at least one episode per night, The Golden Girls, which I completely adore. I'm mean, such a devotee. This is the best sitcom ever. If I need to laugh, if I need to, um, if I need a bit of cheering up, really, I put on The Golden Girls and it cheers me up instantly. It's so good. It's about four. It's a sitcom which was um, broadcast in the 80s and 90s, I think. Not sure about the 90s, but definitely 80s about four women who live in Miami and they're older women, Rose, <laughs> Sophia, Blanche and um, Mia MacArthur, Jesus Christ, um, Dorothy, what? <laughs> can't believe it, this is why I don't film. <laughs> okay, so Dorothy, Blanche, Sophia, Rose and um, Dorothy, Blanche, Sophia and Rose. Uh, so four women who live in my what is wrong with me um who live in miami and it's a sitcom it's endlessly funny all of them have little quirks um dorothy is the most intellectual one she's substitute teacher her she's very logical and she's very deadpan also her humor is very deadpan blonde Devereux is my heroine really she is a southern belle <laughs> and um she is obsessed with sex really and she's wonderful she's very funny as well they're all very funny um, Rose is this absolutely gorgeously sweet um, woman from Mississippi and she is very naive and innocent and they kind of teasingly clash um, because they're so different really and Sophia is Dor Dorothy's mother and um, she is the best and she's got iconic lines and if you hear or see somewhere uh, picture it Sicily <laughs> insert a date here um, that's coming from her actually and she is just absolutely wonderful she's italian and uh yeah they live in miami and they have the most wonderful adventures the um, the sitcom actually touches on a lot of topics and a lot of subjects and it's all handled so so well they are very light-hearted sometimes a little bit deep um but mostly light-hearted and so hilarious i just i couldn't picture it. um so many scenes in my head right now, just hilarious scenes, which had me pause at the screen just so I could laugh for five minutes. So I adore them so, so much and highly recommend them if you haven't seen it. If you need to laugh, honestly, just got the call now, it's just a very go to. Um, I've also been rewatching Good Witch and I am current with Miss Scarlet. So Good Witch Air First is a Hallmark um, show. It's a very cosy show about a woman called Cat Nightingale who owns a B&B in a small town called Middleton um, and she helps really the inhabitants of Middleton with her powers because she's a witch. Um, there's a lot of herbalism in this, there's a lot of helping through um, you know herbs and concoctions and trying to um, see the positive in things really and so I'm trying to see the positive in every day. It's, it's very slow paced which I absolutely love for the evening and I adore this series so, so much. It's very cozy and, and just put it on as background to everything I do, cleaning, uh, cooking, and everything else really. And while I also play video games, which I'm going to talk about in a second. I'm also current with Miss Scarlet and the Duke, which has been, I don't know if you've seen, has been retitled to Miss Scarlet. So what happens is that Miss Scarlet and the Duke is a Victorian show about a lady detective. Can you see a trend here? <laughs> this is my obsession. I need to make a video about that, my favourite little detectives in the Victorian era, or historical little detectives. Um, but Miss Scarlet and the Duke is about her, it was about Eliza Scarlet, who inherits a practice from her, vet, from her father who has recently passed, and the Scotland Yard detective in town is actually the Duke. So, um, he's not a Duke, but um, we call him Duke William, and um, yeah, and they have a slow burn romance, the slowest of burns romance, um, but it's mostly about Eliza solving cases. She's wonderful. I love her. Um, there are four series so far out, and the fourth one, um, I mean, yeah, at the end of the fourth one, I'm not going to tell you what happens because it's just, yeah, but um, things happen, and at the end of the fourth one, um, 
the the actor who played the duke for four se for four seasons and eliza's main love interest um decided to leave the show and so it's been retitled miss scarlet for the rest of its run i hope it's going to um to stay on air for a very long time because i really adore it with or without the duke but i can understand certainly um all points of view and yeah i i love it so so much and i loved series four i have to say there is a flashback episode where you see um where you see them as children as teenagers um how they vented and um had a slow burn was actually really already there and it's it's one of my favorite episodes ever so I really highly recommend and the setting is excellent, the Victorian era is excellent, it touches on many things as well, feminism of course, um, how to be a professional woman um, in the Victorian era, not easy, spoiler, um, and lots of things really, lots of lots of th lots of things, the puzzles, the plenty, I love the, the cast of characters, I'm getting, I've grown really really fond of them and uh, yeah. So looking forward to the rest of it. And I started a new to me show, Chesapeake Shores, which had been on my radar for the longest time. And I have to say, this is excellent. And especially I'm going to rewatch this um, in the summer, I think, because Chesapeake Shores takes place in New England um, on, in a seaside town to, called Chesapeake Shores when Abby, a lawyer, a very successful lawyer, decides to leave her job in New York City and settle back with her family in Chesapeake Shores. Um, with her two daughters, she has just her, her marriage um, um, came to an end. She's a divorced woman and she's trying to manage her uh, her daughters and her career. And it's very hard, so she moves back with her family. She has lots of siblings. All of them are quite different. There's a soldier, um, two lawyers, including Abby, a writer, and a B&B and &B owner, and this absolutely gorgeous scenic. Um, uh, Chesapeake Shores, it's absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Um, they have, they are very privileged, they have all the money in the world, so um, their problems are many, mainly um, internal problems really in the family, and it's it's very cosy, it's very cosy, there's lots of romance, lots of friendship, lots of sibling scenes, um, and it's absolutely wonderful, and I love that this is one of the few shows actually where um, I can think of at least one of the romances starts in season one. I think there are about six seasons or so, or so and it's the same romance actually in season six. So the couple evolved and grew together, um, but they're still as much as love in love as the first day really. And this they didn't break up or anything. Nothing major happened. It just they wrote a, a happy couple for once, which thank you um yeah so absolutely gorgeous and i have to say that abby actually has um a romance with a country singer called trace um who was a childhood sweetheart in the first few seasons and then the actor left so i was invested in the romance um i could see there were some troubles um in the couple but i was invested in the romance but then she meets uh, someone else and the last two series are amazing, amazing. And Abby's completely transformed. She's very carefree and she seems to be so, so happy. And I was happy for her actually because this is one of the best romances I've ever seen. And it was like a soft record, I suppose, because the actor, the main actor for the first few seasons left. Um, but wow, wow, so, so good. Um, I'm talking about Evan. I loved Evan and Abby together so, so much. One of my favorite couples ever, I think. So um really really unexpected and uh, they grow on you they grow on you um they grow on me so absolutely wonderful i highly recommend this book shows loved it i know that it's based on a series of books i would love to read them um i think by sherry woods don't quote me on that but i think so and um the inner eagle point i think it's the first one so i really really wanted to read those um it's just my cup of tea honestly i love small town romances so yeah <laughs> um next up um th speaking of um hallmark actually they had the most amazing jane austen season back in i think february uh, have you seen that mm. They had one, two, um, three, four, four um, Jane Austen inspired movies back in February, all brand new, um, made by Hallmark. And I have to say, the only one I didn't absolutely love was um, their version of Sense Sensibility. It was a period drama. 
and the costumes were great the actors were great it's just that the plot was too much like the bbc sense sensibility miniseries which i am absolutely devoted to so you can't touch that for me so um just having that repeated felt a little bit redundant um it was all of the same lines on all of the same plots um at least at the beginning so i didn't continue um the the series but well, the film really this film um but yeah it was it was okay and I absolutely loved the rest of it. So, um, Paging Mr. Darcy, for example, is um, about um, a woman who has to give a speech to Jane Austen conference. She's a Jane Austen expert and she has to give a speech to Jane Austen conference. Um, and she meets one of the ma men who does the entertainment, um, who's dressed up as Mr. Darcy and does the entertainment. And they have an enemies to lovers kind of romance. It's very good. And American Austen is about this American woman who is um, absolutely obsessed with Jane Austen's uh, novels, as we all are. And she actually is transported to Pride and Prejudice. It, this one was so good because it had the Pride and Prejudice, which she very unexpected things happened which are hilarious and also in real life in the present day i suppose she rejects a proposal and this whole story has her um this whole experience really of um going to the past has her reconsider everything and i love this one really love this one if there's a real character development there um it, it's hilarious because of the pride and prejudice um plot really which um you get to you know live in that in that story but also unexpected things happened uh, happen because she's there and she messes things up pretty much um, this was really a gem and um love and jane which is about a jane austen book club um run by this woman who so she's single and then she meets someone who um buys the bookshop where the the book club is taking place and the clash and there's a bit of an enemies to lovers there and gorgeous and i have to say the leads of um, paging mr darcy and love and jane the um male leads for those two smoking hot and very very sexy scenes um no 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 scratch that not very sexy scenes very sexy lines <laughs> very sexy lines um these there's no sexy scenes or hallmarks but very sexy lines actually the banter and the flirting between the the female and the male leads in those two in paging mr darcy and love and jane is excellent excellent and um i love her boyfriend in an american in austin as well i mean really good um heroes um loved that all loved all of them highly recommend if you haven't seen them what a treat that was i was really looking forward to that season and then when it aired i just i was blown away it's just oh my god this is really really good and i'm so glad they they, they went to um you know they went the um austin land direction and the um lost in austin direction but it was also fresh and new and just really really good <laughs> so i'm highly recommending it um next up was in terms of um film still um where would called coming of age stories um in high school in secondary school or high school so coming of age sorry i was obsessed at some point at the beginning of the year i still am um with just finding really good high school stories um i have watched sex education which i really really like um but i wanted more i wanted more um so i watched some absolute gems prom pact oh my god prom pact was is one of my favorite films now um it's a coming of age story really it's about a high school um girl who is very very um gifted she's very talented and she wants to get to harvard but um she is very obsessed with Harvard and she finds a way to, to go there by having, by um, faking an interest, I suppose, in um, the quarterback of her team because his father is a Harvard alumnus and things happen. And she has an amazing, amazing male-female friendship with her best friend is a boy and they, their friendship is excellent. They have a car scene where they're singing a song I have had this song on repeat ever since I watched the film. It was so, so good. Um, it's a very, very good high school experience. I love the ending as well. Um, 
there's a romance in there, there are several romances actually, and absolutely wonderful, wonderful. Did you know that the promposal was a thing? Um, asking somebody to go to prom with you is becoming a thing and it's almost like a proposal, but just to go to prom. It's hilarious, it's so good. Um, it, it's, it's not the generation I'm a part of, obviously I was born in 1988, but it's, I, I wish I had that much, that, that much confidence really in, 19, in, in, in back in the 90s already, when I was in high school. Um, this was, this, yeah, this was really, really, really good. So I highly recommend Prom Pact. Um, to all the boys I've loved before, I watched the um, three films, I think it was, of this, which is also based on um, a book, I think, or a series of books. This is by the same, oh, oh gosh, I should not have talked about that because I'm not sure of the names, I'm so sorry. But I think it's by the same author as um, The Summer Turned Pretty, which I watched the first series of. I never finished it, I don't know why. Uh, I didn't need a break from that and then I never just picked it up again. I need to because I love to all the boys I've loved before. Really, really good. Again, um, high school experience, but more of a coming of age experience, I suppose. And a romance, really. So, so good. The dresses and that are just so beautiful. And I love the heroine so much. Um, and yeah, to all the boys I've loved before is about... Um, this girl who is, she writes, um, she, she, write, she wrote letters to all of her crushes and put them in a book. And one day she realizes that someone has sent the letters to all of her crushes from childhood, from childhood to teenagehood. And all of her crushes just show up on her doorstep and things happen. This is so good. I loved it so, so much. I loved all three, really, our movies and the iconic scenes everywhere and just beautiful stuff and, you know what? I loved Taylor Swift when she was doing country music. I have, I haven't really, um, it's not my, pop music is not really my style. Um, so I, I just loved her in her country music era. I'm so happy she's doing so well, but she's everywhere in those, in, the, in those um, TV shows and movies right now. And I really love her, how her music is incorporated in, into the stories. It works so, so well. Um, yeah, so good for you, Taylor. Um, I'm so happy for you, honestly. I just remember her from her Speak Now era. Um, I was desperate to go to her concert. I couldn't. And yeah, just, I, I'm, I still, you know, I still listen to her first few albums. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, it's amazing. Um, proportions really, so. Okay, and then I really um, was obsessed at some point with um, coming out stories um, for right now, so teenagers coming out right now and coming of age stories in high school, navigating school and romance and also coming out um, as a queer person. And so I watched two which really stood out to me. Um, the first was Love, Victor, which is a spin-off of Love, Simon. You don't need to have watched Love, Simon. I prefer Love, Victor by far. Um, Love Simon was a movie, Love Victor is a TV show. Um, Love Victor is about Victor who is, who is um, um, a high school um, boy, um, he's gorgeous and he he's very fun, fun, carefree I would say and he is, um, he's part of a family who is half Puerto Rican, half Colombian American and so he goes to high school and he's figuring out um, his sexuality really and he realized maybe he might be queer and maybe gay and things happen and he meets, he has wonderful romances, it's very fun to watch and all of his friends are very fun to watch, I love the dynamic. I also love that this one had a very um, interesting and new to me at least um, plot with his parents. His parents are struggling with his sexuality and um, his mother in particular, she's Catholic and she's really struggling with his sexuality and it was handled so well and the development for that was just really really interesting to me. Um, I loved it. Um, very sexy scenes also which um, I mean appropriate but still um, very interesting. The music and things they can do. Um, it's just yeah it's amazing what they can do now with just like very few angles and music it just blows me away um but yeah very very good i loved love victor i love the ending as well i had a preference for one boy in particular um that i wanted victor to be with and i got my wish granted so that was great i was rooting for them and yeah so that was number one and number two is hot stopper oh my god oh my god <laughs> hot stopper is so emotional this is a coming out story as well. This is a coming of age story in high school navigating again school and romance. This one is so special because I love, love, and I'm very protective of um, the main cast of characters who are 
more or less all of them queer um, and I'm so protective of them I love them so so much um, I wish I had that much confidence in school really um, yeah I'm so happy that, that this generation has got those shows to look up to um, which are so the hard stop in particular is so positive and so optimistic and so gorgeous and how things should be and it gives you an example of how things should be um, it, oh, I love it so, so much. The romance is beautiful, so emotional and so, with so much heart and oh, you just want to give them a hug, really. So Heartstopper is about these two boys navigating school and romance and um, they've all got their personal problems to deal with, but they deal with it together and they've got an amazing, amazing friendship group and um, God, I love them so, so much. <laughs> um, yeah. I just had stuff that really hurts my heart. So Love Victor is completely finished, but Heart Stuff is still going on actually. It's based on a comic series. Um and I love that the uh, the creator is so involved in the TV show. I think it shows because I have read the comics actually and they were beautiful as well. Um a few changes here and there, but they make complete sense and love both really. So um yeah, Heartstopper has got two series out and the third one is coming out hopefully soon. Um absolutely love it, yeah, absolutely love it. Moving on to um, my last category in films and then I've got video games. So my last category in films is romantic comedies. I had a huge romantic comedies a moment at some point this year and that's all. Um, I love romantic comedies across the board really. I'm a huge uh, fan of scribble comedies in particular in the 30s and 40s. But I love romantic comedies really and I just never take the time to watch movies. My go-to is just TV shows. But anyway, I want to take the time to, to watch them. Um, some of them are really, really good. And I don't know how. I was born in 1988. And I don't know why. But I had never watched Pretty Woman. And had never watched Four Weddings and a Funeral. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't. But anyway, um, I remembered that this year. So I watched Four Weddings and a Funeral and um, Pretty Woman this year. And both are absolutely fantastic. I'm sure you need me to tell you the plot of these movies. But I'm going to anyway. Um, <laughs> Pretty Woman is about um, a millionaire who hires um, a prostitute for a week and they fall in love and this was amazing, this has such iconic lines and iconic scenes, um, there is a very sexy piano scene, um, there's a, a very good, very hilarious shopping scene, um, it's it's um, My Fair Lady kind of a story really because she's transformed really by all this money and all this confidence as well. And the, the, the bodyguard in the Princess Diaries actually plays the concierge at the hotel where they're staying at in Pretty Woman and I love him. He has this protective sort of streak to him which I completely love and I love him to pieces. So I was so happy to see him there. Um, yeah, she has this line which, oh baby, I'm going to make it so good, you're never going to want to let me go. Which, oof, I love her, I loved her, I love her character. Um, and Four Weddings and Funeral is completely different. And I just absolutely loved it. It's about Hugh Grant, who is um, who doesn't want to commit to anybody, who is single for life, and um, well, single, you know, with years on so here and there, but he's kind of single for life, I suppose. Uh, and he goes to an endless, you know, endless stream of weddings all the time. He's invited to all these weddings, and things happen. You get to know him. You get to know his friends. They are all hilarious and have very defined personalities. Um, and he finds love in the process as well, maybe. And uh, absolutely gorgeous, the gorgeous, loved, loved it. And I can see myself, we're watching both forever and ever. So I can see why they're so iconic and they feel personal to me now because I have watched them. Um, and yeah, absolutely adore them. And my last category is going to be video games because I have been playing a lot of video games recently. I got a Switch for Christmas. My boyfriend is amazing. I absolutely adore him. Adore him. Um, I, I love him so, so much. And he makes every day special. He makes my life special. And um, my life was just, I felt so good when I was single. I felt so happy when I was single. And then I met him and it's just fireworks. It's the difference between Disney um, <laughs> by day and Disney with fireworks at night. And that's how this romance feels like for me. That's how my relationship feels like with him. He's incredible. So um, I absolutely adore him. Anyway, he um, gives me a Switch for Christmas, which I had been wanting for years. It's such a good gift. I had been wanting a Switch before meeting him actually. So absolutely, absolutely wonderful. 
and I have been playing a lot. I have been playing, I played and finished Mario Wonder, which um, I can't believe I finished the game. Mario Wonder, which is a platformer, it's a Mario game, but with a twist, with two twists, I would say. Um, you are allowed badges per level, meaning that per level you can choose your superpower pretty much. You can choose your special ability per, per level. So before each level, you can choose a badge, you can choose a superpower, a different superpower. There are lots of them, they're very creative. And also, um, in each level, the level starts, it's okay, it's very good, it's very beautiful, it's very imaginative, and then you catch a wonder seed, and when you catch the seed, the level completely changes, completely transforms, and all hell breaks loose, and it's absolutely wonderful. I finished it, um, but it's the kind of games, I love Nintendo games for that, because it's the kind of game that you can finish uh, when you're not specially talented, I'm not. I struggled with some things and I had to look up a lot of things and a lot of videos of gameplays to finish some levels, but you can finish it. I finished the game. However, if you want to 100% finish the game, it is very hard. So you can finish it at your level, if you know what I mean. So there are all sorts of levels for everybody and you can finish it at your level. You can catch things and finish, you know, without going into all of the 100% for each level or you can go the 100% route and things get really really interesting from there. I might go back and try to 100% the game. I haven't said that. I haven't said that. I just forget I said that. I'm not committing to anything but this was so good. So so good and so imaginative and was grinning the whole time which brings me to Princess Peach Showtime which I bought two days ago and just came out. And I don't care if this game is three hours long. I have been smiling my way through this game. It is so perfect. You get to play Peach and in her own adventure, she goes to theater and she has to, um, she has scenes in theater that she has to interpret as um, different, um, different characters really. So there's Swordfighter Peach and Patissier Peach and um, I've played Ninja Peach and, um, can't remember the rest really because I haven't played for that long but she's gorgeous she's gorgeous just for the costumes alone I want to cosplay her um and she is great honestly I, just, I haven't been having a blast and same thing here actually is that you I have been finishing levels pretty easily but if you want to go back and go 100% this is not going to be easy it's going to take you a while so I love that about Nintendo games is that you can choose your own adventure and I love that and you can have rewards for um just you know getting to the end or you can have rewards for really working through it and i want to 100 percent both games because i am obsessed and if, if all nintendo games are like that i want them all which is um a terrifying thing to say because it's going to cost me a lot of money but yeah i love them so so much so i'm obsessed with peach and i've been playing princess peach showtime um and this i got two years two years ago and I wanted to play that forever and ever. Which brings me to my um, next two games, which I have been playing every day, actually, and it's Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. Animal Crossing, you're on an island and you it's very chill. This one's very chilled and relaxed. And also you've got a limit, um, limited um, list of things to do each day. You can't, resources don't really spawn um, um, before the next day again so if you pick up something it's going to disappear for that day and it's on real time meaning that if I'm going to you know if I log in right now it's going to be today it's going to be Easter Sunday at if I log in at 10 a.m it's going to be 10 a.m in the game as well so it's real time and um, you've got a limited amount of things to do each day which I kind of love actually because you don't spend too much time in the game uh, and you've got things to do each day, the new things to do each day. So you're on an island, a deserted island, and it's up to you to make it your own. And there is no story that I can tell so far, but I'm a bit newbie, so I don't know. But um, I'm not that far in the game, but I have loved, um, I just unlocked underwater swimming uh, for the first time the other day, and I love doing that. I love that. Um, yeah, I'm not really into decorating, so I'm not sure what's for me up there yet, but I love finding resources, um, updating my tools, and selling um, things that I find on the island so far, so I'm really enjoying it. My island is called Maple um, because I love autumn so much. And Stardew Valley is um, completely different actually. It's a um, pixel art kind of game, so completely different. And uh, it seems massive to me. There's a lot of things to do and each day is about 13 minutes. So 
and you can you you go to sleep whenever you want um and you can have new things to do whenever you want as a consequence and you are dropped onto your farm left to you by your grandfather kind of like in wildflowers really which is one of my favorite games ever um and you are dropped into the farm and it's up to you to make the farm work i suppose but there are lots of things to do you can do you can have relationships um friendships or romances with the townspeople there are festivals and events um you can gather resources you can collect resources you can um you can um just have collection bundles and give them to someplace special um there seems to be also an overarching story at some point because i unlocked something the other day which makes me think that um one of the goals of the game is actually to have you um, pick up one of each items in the games maybe i don't know uh, but it seems to make sense to me i really like Sand valley um i really really like it and i play it every day in order to have more money to update my tools in order to go to the festivals in order to meet new people and um you have quests also you have to uh, to complete well you don't have to but you can complete and it's really good there is something about the game which is very divisive and which i bizarrely enough ended up loving and that's fishing. Fishing in the game is very um, hard, especially when you're new to it. Um, the mechanism of the of fishing are very hard to understand. Um, I was so frustrated at first really. And then when you get it, I personally loved it. And this is one of my favorite things to do. I could I could fish all day long really because it's a mini game. Um, it's a mini game and it's it, the difficulty is actually quite high. So, um, I've got what is called a training rod right now, which I purchased from the fish shop, which makes it a little bit more um, accessible. But it's quite hard, actually, and I love that. I love the mini game um, for fishing, and I'm really enjoying it. So we'll see, but I'm really enjoying it. And Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing have been playing every day, and right now I'm playing Princess Peach Showtime as well, which I'm really loving. So completely different. I love a platformer. Uh, you know where you're going. There's an end. <laughs> there's an, you know, an ending. Um, that's there for you. But it also like, like free open world type of things, which um don't really have an ending, and you can play forever and ever, like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing. So uh, yeah, I like having both at the same time. Um, and I think that's it for me, really. Um, the only thing that I wanted to talk about is that I have been watching a lot of YouTube. I always have, always will. And um, there is a series of videos, which I'm not sure you've seen yet, but which mentioned a lot of my favourite books. Actually, that's Kate Howe's 100 Life Softening Books, which she calls Life Softening, I would call crazy. And she published a video, a video. She um, uploaded a series of 10 videos, actually. Each video talks about 10 cozy books that she absolutely love, loves. And she made a playlist out of them um, the other day. And so I have been watching them for, you know, on the loop, really, re-watching them on the loop, um, just to take notes and to hear her talk about those books. She's really good at talking about those books and making you want to read those books. And I had read a lot of those books already, um, but I took notes on what to reread, on the new reads to me, and it's been a blast, really. I highly recommend this series. I'm going to link it down below for you. And um, the last thing I want to talk about is what I'm looking forward to. So I'm looking forward to two things mainly. Um, oh yeah, I didn't talk about that, but my boyfriend and I got into, well, he was a huge fan of Kung Fu Panda, the animated um, series of films, and I had never seen them. I watched them with him. I'm very picky and I love them so, so much. I love animated uh, films, really. I, I always want to give them a go. And this was really, really my cup of tea. So I loved it. And number four came out this week. We haven't had a chance to go and watch it yet, but we're going to. So hopefully that's that. Um, but it's looking forward to that. And then we're looking forward to the new season of One Calls the Heart in eight days. I think seven or eight days. Well, next Sunday, so eight, seven days. Uh, oh my God. Um, so like One Calls the Heart. And um, I don't want to say too much, or say too much, but um, the romance between Elizabeth and a certain someone um, is getting me really, 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 really excited for the show. And I've always been really excited for the show because I love it. And I think I started watching it um, when it first aired, actually, um, back in the day. And it's been a while, but I have never been this excited about the new season. So absolutely looking forward to it. Um, I just, yeah, everybody really, all the characters, see all the characters in the storylines, but most specifically, this specific romance that I've been looking forward to since season six. 
so yeah <laughs> um what can I say I just yeah I'm so happy and um I'm a huge fan of this show and I'm a huge fan of those two characters in particular and the Rosemary and Lee are my favorites in my heart so I love Rosemary I think I want to be Rosemary so yeah when it calls the heart and number two that I'm looking forward to is the, se the third season of Bridgerton <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with myself in May, um, but I know that I'm going to have to take time off work because, because I don't want to absolutely watch Bridgerton when it comes out. And I just, I can't wait, really. I'm just so happy um, for the first season. I rewatched season one yeah, um, a few days ago. So good. Um, I couldn't watch season two because the main couple spends all of it apart, really. So it just made me so anxious about rewatching it. I didn't really like season two. Um, the, I don't know, the route that it went down was just not for me. Um, but I'm so looking forward to season three. So looking forward to it. I just, yeah, I can't wait um, to see Pauline. <laughs> so yeah, and this is it for me, I think, today. And I hope you've had, um, you heard about something that you wanted to, um, to check out, really. And I hope that these recommendations work for you and that you, you know, you heard about something that you maybe you wanted to pick up um, the book or the movie or the, or the video game, even. I'm a video game expert, but I do love some of them. So yeah, and I will speak to you very soon. This is the 1st of April, so have a fabulous month of April as well. And um, I love you. Thank you so much for watching, really, truly. Thank you so much for being here um, through, through it all, <laughs> through all the upheavals and all of the changes. And uh, yeah, I will see you very soon. Bye.